a lie. Every human being desires to feel important and they want to do something valuable and they want to feel that they are significant. Am I right? Now, if you'd say no to that, you are lying to me. So two of his students were very honest. They decided to let him know that they want to be great. They wanted to be leaders. So they sent their mother to talk to him. And this is found in Matthew chapter 20. And perhaps they sent their mother for different reasons, you know, or maybe, or maybe their mother initiated it. Because, you know, mothers like to look out for their children. I don't know about you, but in Bain Town, they looked out for their kids. But the story actually opens up where the mother approaches Jesus and asks him a question. The question was, when you come into your kingdom, that means when you establish your government, can you have my two sons, one sit on the right, that's deputy, one sit on the left, that's deputy. In other words, take care of my boys. So you a king, make them co-kings. That was a request. She was looking for what? Position of power and leadership. That was the request. If you read the story, Matthew 10, his response was very deep. He asked her a question. He said, can your sons drink the cup that I drink? Now, if you read the next verse, the mother didn't answer. The two boys answered, which means they were right there behind her, letting her front for them. That's my impression. Because when he said, can you drink the cup that I drink? They said, yes, we can. Sounds like Bahamians speaking without thinking. And the Bible says, he said to them, he stopped talking to the mother and he said, you will indeed drink, read my lips, from my cup. And this is a very important difference here in the original language. He didn't say you will drink my cup because no one can drink your cup. His cup was what? Death on a cross for humanity. You remember in the garden of, of Gethsemane, he prayed. Remember the prayer? Take this cup from me he was struggling with his assignment the key to his greatness his gift was to give himself as salvation to humanity that was his gift and he knew that he had to die to do it so they said we can drink your cup he says no you can't but you will drink from it and if you study the life of James and John they both died horribly James was sawn in half with a saw they cut him in half with a saw. And John, you remember, was boiled in hot oil. And then he was abandoned with his skin out of his body on an island called Patmos. They suffered. But that's not my point. He used the opportunity to decide to teach the whole class a lesson. So the Bible says he turned to the twelve and he said, to sit on my right and my left is not mine to give you. This is an important statement. He's telling us that leadership cannot be prayed for. You cannot ask God for, for leadership positions. Hmm. Can I put it another way for religious people to get angry? There are some prayers Jesus cannot answer. Let me quote him. He says, to sit at my right and my left is not mine to give. But these positions belong to those for whom they have been prepared. I'm quoting Jesus, Matthew 20. By my father. Ah. They wanted positions of leadership. He said, you cannot ask for leadership positions there are positions that you were born to be in designed by your father the word father means source 
Everyone in this room has a position that belongs to them. Let me quote Jesus again. These positions belong to those for whom they are being prepared. In other words, your leadership position belongs to you. No one can take your place. When I discovered this, I became very, very comfortable in my skin. You see, that's why I have no competition. You cannot compete with a space that doesn't exist anywhere else. Are you with me? So you can never be jealous of a true leader because you can never be them nor fit in their spot. This set me free from any kind of competition and jealousy and pride because where I am, I belong in this spot. Don't try this spot. This was built just for me. He said it was what prepared for me. And then he drove it home. He says, The rulers of this world, in their desire to be leaders, love to lord it over people and use them as benefactors to rule over them and lord over them. In other words, they like to control people. The word lord means owner. They like to believe they own people. He said, this is not leadership next verse but whosoever wants to be great whoever wants to be great ah, I thought it was interesting and in my book uh, entitled in charge you should read that book carefully please some of y'all haven't read it before it's probably the most important book I've ever written on understanding leadership that book is about leadership in charge I took this entire chapter and wrote a whole book on it which you've never read, of course. Because that book deals with every aspect of this leadership class Jesus had. And this point he makes about, he says, uh, whoever wants to be great. He used the term, whosoever. What he does is he opens the leadership potential to whosoever. Now here's what's interesting about this. He did not rebuke them for desiring to be great. He actually did the opposite. He told them how to achieve it. Did you ever notice that? See, he knows what you want. But he's saying, don't do it the way of the system. You don't become great by oppressing people degrading people, devaluing people, lording over people, he says, and using people to benefit yourself. He said, you can become great. Whoever wants to be great, he says, here's how to do it. He's telling us how to become a leader. He says, here's how to become a leader. You must become the servant of all men. Now that was a contradiction to the Roman and Greek philosophy. Because their philosophy was they are leaders because people serve them. He said, in my country, heaven, you are a leader because of the amount of people you serve. It's completely reversed. In other words, in the kingdom of God, leadership is not measured by how many people serve you, but by how many people you serve. And the more people you serve, the greater you are, he says. But he doesn't mean for you to become a slave to people or to become subservient to humanity like a doormat. The term he uses is this word doulos, servant. It's, it's a word that means I distribute myself to humanity. I serve my gift to the world. That's leadership. You become great when you find the gift that you have born with inherent in your life and you decide to serve it to humanity this is where leadership is born and that gift we're going to talk about that a little later on in the series but that gift is very very uh, it's kind of complex because it is a fruit it is a passion it is a hunger it is a anger it's a lot of things in this gift 
Hi, thank you so much for watching. Please remember you can support our work on our Patreon page and you get access to exclusive content and full videos. And please hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so and click the notification bell to be the first to receive newer content. Please don't forget to like and share this video with your friends to be a blessing to them.